Hey card making friends, welcome back, it's Sandy here. And today I'm going to share an easy ink blending technique to elevate your die cut cards. I'm working with the new fresh picked release from Spellbinders. I have four cards to share and they are created with the daffodils, the picked berries, anemones, and the buttercups. And there's also a fresh picked sentiment dies. Included in this release is the Columns Embossing Folder, and I'll be using that on a couple of cards today. Uh, for this piece, I cut the black at 4 by 5 and a half, and this is going to allow me to pop this little piece of striped designer paper down the side. I've also die cut the sentiment three times, twice in green and once in gold. I have my leaves cut out, and I have all my flowers cut out. I did all the cutting ahead of time uh, to keep this video nice and compact for you and not too long. And you can see with the daffodils, I cut out three of the flowers just to show you all of the pieces and a layout that you could use. Um, as we get moving along here, I think I decide that I'm only going to use two of the flowers. But the part about this is we're going to get into doing the ink blending. And I'm going to be working with Spice Marmalade and Mowed Lawn. And I'm using these blending brushes from Spellbinders. They have a nice tall handle and they're really easy to hold on to. I'm also working on Spellbinders grid paper because I like to blot my ink before I actually put it onto my die cut. And as you can see, I'm holding the die cut and I'm working my way up. You could also use a sticky mat for this. Um, these pieces are all fairly big and very easy to hold on to, so I decided to forego the mat. But what I am doing is putting some shadows into this leaf die. And you'll see that I'm sticking fairly close to the center and I'm adding the darker color green to the bottom part of the leaves and I'm running it up and down the stem. And I turn it just because it's easier for me to get into some of those places. Um, you want to be careful when you're doing this to hold on to it. Uh, if you find that you're tearing it, maybe pop it back inside um, the piece that you die cut it out of, which will provide you with a flat surface and not pull on the die cut piece quite so much. So I'm going back over some of the leaves that I want a little bit darker. And now I'm moving over to the second leaf. And this is going to be an overlay over top of the first one. So I want to make sure that the stem on the second shorter one uh, gets a lot of that darker ink. So what this is doing is it's adding depth, highlight, and shadows to your die cut pieces. And it, um, it really is going to bring them to life. You'll see this when we start to put it together. We've got to do the work first though. So we're getting in there and staying on the bottom of all of these leaves and adding as much of this dark green as you feel comfortable with. Um, I like to go a little bit on the light side until I kind of get everything um, put together and sometimes once it dries, it dries off a little bit later. Uh, you get an opportunity to put a second coat on. If you put it on too thick, it's pretty hard to remove it. Okay, so moving on to the yellow and you'll notice that I die cut all my pieces from colored cardstock. This is all uh, Spellbinders cardstock. I really like their cardstock. It's nice and thick and I love their colors. And it gives you a good uh, jump off point instead of having to color the entire piece. You're only adding the highlights. You can cut all these in white if you want to, but you've got a lot more blending work ahead of you um, starting with a white base. So again, we're working on the flower now and usually the shadow or the darkest part is at the leaf that is, or the part of the petal that is closest to the center of the flower. And that's why I start my ink blending there because I'm not too worried about that centerpiece getting really, really dark because I've got two die cuts that are gonna cover that. But it's a good place to start with your ink and pull it out so that it's light as it pulls out over the petal. Okay, and I'm doing the center now. Uh, the center is going to be very dark as daffodils are in out in nature. And I'm not worrying about the center because there is yet another piece to cover it. This one with the little holes in it, I'm going to cover the whole thing. Uh, but I'm not going to do it uh, perfectly. I want some imperfection there. Easy for me to say this morning. <laughs> Okay, so there's the first flower done. Now we're going to do the second one. And again, starting near the center and pulling the ink out and moving my way around. And you want to kind of pull it in the direction of the petals. So you'll see that there are some die cut directionals in the petals. Try and angle your ink 
in that same direction and it will look more uniform. Okay, and I'm not going to worry about that centerpiece because again there's an overlay. So in the overlay I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to pull the ink up. And this piece is usually a darker orange so again I'm covering the whole thing. And I'm not going to worry about the stamens because I've cut them out of some green cardstock and I'm simply going to snip them and glue them on. So the cardstock I used for this particular one is white, black, I had some striped paper, chamomile is the yellow, peridot is the green, and then I have a little bit of uh, brushed gold, I think, in there somewhere on the sentiment. Okay, so now it's time to put these together. I'm starting, I've got my base done, and so basically I just glued it down to an A2 top folding card base. And I'm using Barely Art Glue. It is my favorite glue for this type of thing. Uh, using a liquid glue gives you a little bit of maneuvering time when you first put it down. If you don't get it exactly where you want it, you've got a little bit of negotiation time. Okay, I'm trying to hold on to it and not get glue all over my fingers. Popping it down on the bottom giving it a good press and you want to give this a good press because it is sitting on top of an embossed background so it's lumpy all of that glue is not going to stick it's only going to stick uh, on the raised portions and so you need to give it a couple of seconds to set and what I do off camera is I put a big acrylic uh, stamping handle over top of that okay so here is where I'm showing you that I've added the stamens to this one and I've added the center to this flower and I'm just kind of looking at it deciding uh, kind of where I'm going to position these. I'm going to use foam squares on the back of these now that I've finished the audition and I've decided that yes that is where I want them to go. Okay so I like to cut my foam squares in half that way they go twice as far and I am adding them to the back of the flower which unfortunately is out of the picture. Sorry about that and I'm using my uh, Spellbinder scissors to cut them. These are no stick scissors and they are by far my favorite. If you are in the market for a new pair of scissors, I highly recommend them. Okay, so removing the protective covers from the back of my uh, little squares and I'm going to position. You'll notice on the petals that I'm just touching right there, they are lines. So you wanna line those up with the left side of your card Okay, and then the one on the right is going to overlap that other large flower just a little bit and I'm going to angle it up so that the stamens stay within the black background so they don't get bent when you stick them inside of a card. Okay, so there's the card part finished. Now with these three pieces of the sentiment, I'm going to stack them. And the reason that I cut them out of green was number one, I had a bunch of scraps sitting on my work table. Uh, the second part was if I had done them in white, it would have shown underneath the gold. And if I had it done them in black, same thing. So by doing them in green, the little bit that you do see from the stacking is going to blend in with the leaves and uh, look nice and uniform um, and finished on the card. So it's gonna look really professional. So I'm just laying that down, making sure that I have them all lined up nicely. These are nice and thick, so they're easy to line up. Add my glue to the back and I'm going to tape it glue it right down to the front of the card. Sorry, I forgot to pull the camera angle back out. So a little bit of this is at the bottom of the camera. I haven't done a video for three weeks. <laughs> I think I'm out of practice. Anyway, you get the idea, right? So if you want to add a little bit of color to these, just put a scrap piece of paper underneath them and come in with your blending tool and add a little bit. Or you could have been smart and done it before we started this. And here's my finished card with all the pretty depth. Up next we have the buttercup dies and again I have die cut them all out. I'm using waterfall, peridot, white flowers, uh, pink and black and a white card base and I'm going to be layering those little black flower centers over top of the pink and we're going to be adding some green to the leaves and some pink to those white flowers. The inks I'm using are Maud Lonigan and Picked Raspberry and I'm just going to zoom in here for you working over top of the previous mess so hopefully you can still see what I'm doing. Uh, these die cuts are a little bit smaller but they're still quite easy to hold on to and again repeating what I did in the last one and I'm just going to do uh, one set of leaves and one flower for you because it's very repetitious. Uh, you'll get 
get the idea and then you can just stop the video and get yours all colored and then start the video again and carry on okay so here's quick and easy there's my leaves and I'm going to switch over to the pink again it's picked raspberry and I'm doing it on the back first. I want to make sure that um, the brush that I'm using kind of looked like it had a little bit of curl on it, and it did. Uh, hopefully, I'm getting it all off on the back of this flower. Okay, so flipping over to the front, and you want to get rid of some of the ink before you start, and that's why I'm blotting it on the graph paper so that it doesn't come in too heavy. We want this to be kind of light and fluffy. And again, I'm not worrying about the center because I have two pieces that will be overlapping. And I'm just showing you here how I'm adding the color to the bud because there's quite a few buds. So you want to start at the bottom and pull your way out to the top. And again, don't get too heavy with this because it can take it over quite easily. So speeding this up a little bit, I have finished all the coloring and I've actually glued the leaves all down onto the card front already. Again, an A2 size card base, so four and a quarter by 11, you're gonna score and fold that at five and a half. And then I added a piece of waterfall to the front. I decided not to emboss this one because there's an awful lot going on with the leaves and the flowers and I didn't want it to get too busy. You can have too much background noise. Okay, so I'm starting to position my flowers. Again, I'm using uh, foam tape on the back, little foam squares cut in half so that uh, it elevates it slightly to give it a little bit more dimension. And we have all this pretty depth and detail from adding the ink to the leaves and the flowers instead of them just being plain white or plain green. Okay, so for the petals, I am not going to use um, foam squares. Whoops, sorry. My camera doesn't like looking at white things and there's an awful lot of white going on there right now. Okay, so I'm just kind of placing these where I think they go. There's a few different sizes and you just kind of have to feel out uh, on the leaf portion where they fit in. Okay, and then you're going to get out your barely art glue and you're going to glue them all down. And right here... <laughs> I'm trying to decide if I got flat and I knocked them all off. That's okay. I know where they're going. Okay. And you see I'm using up my picker upper tool. It works. I guess they're originally for gems and jewels to add those to your cards. They work really well for picking up little pieces of die cutting. I use them all the time when I'm putting my Spellbinders cards together. Okay. And just work your way around adding all of these pieces back in. And I've already stacked the sentiment for this one as well. And I used the smile one this time, as you can see up on the top right there. And again, I used the gold uh, for my top one. And I used uh, two layers of green underneath of it. And I really think the flowers look pretty with the black centers. I think it really adds a real pop of darkness to the center of each of those flowers. I tried it the other way around with the pink on top and it wasn't anywhere near as striking. So maybe fool around with it, addition a few different colors and see what you like the best. Okay, so just adding a little bit of my glue to the back of my sentiment and I'm going to pop that down. And then I need to add the dot to the top of my eye. I'm holding it up just because I'm trying to get it on there straight and right now it isn't. <laughs> it's moved. It's hard to get these on straight when you don't you don't want to put your head right underneath the camera. Okay so I think this is where I decide hey it's a little bit crooked and here's the great thing about white glue. Pick it up and move it. There we go. Okay and I'm just going to move that little dot on the top of the eye. Okay, now I'm happy. Okay, we finished that one. We're moving on to the anagnomes. Uh, these are beautiful. I decided to go back to my favorite colors and I'm using the uh, embossing folder again this time. Uh, a tip for embossing folders, if you spritz both sides of your cardstock before you stick it in the embossing folder, it breaks down the uh, fibers in the paper and it helps to get a really really nice deep emboss and this new little jug is from Spellbinders and it is the perfect size for a little spritzer on your desk. I really really like this little guy. 
Okay, so I have again, once again, cut out all of these pieces. I even have one that's already glued together so that you can see the difference between having one that has got the ink blending on it and one that hasn't. Like there is a definite difference. There's a really nice depth of field in the petal. It looks more three dimensional and it has more color in it. And so the colors that I'm using for this one are Peacock Feathers, Prize Ribbon and Mowed Lawn. I'm using the prize ribbon on the background of the flowers, which is done in the teal topaz, and then the front piece is waterfall. And one of the nice things about Spellbinders cardstock is they have kind of a light, medium, and dark of every color in their family, so it's really easy to cut these out and to have them look nice and um, coordinating because the colors are all from the same color family you don't get into you know red blues yellow blues green blues they're all in the same kind of line okay so I am repeating my ink blending and using a few different brushes to do that and then I'm just doing the kind of green stem and the bottom of the flower and this one shows so you have to put some color into the bottom of it because the flower is going to be over top of it so it's obviously going to be in a shadow so you want to add that dark to it and again I'm doing the stem and I'm doing the inside part of both of the leaves because those out in nature would be in the shade okay so we have all our pieces now I need to glue them together, so I used uh, Sun Kissed in Black for the flower center. And you're just going to layer those. I find pushing up the black a little bit to the top uh, of the Sun Kissed um, with a little bit less Sun Kissed showing looked quite nice when you started to layer the flowers together. Okay, and then you're going to take that top layer and you're going to add a pile of glue to that and that's going to overlap and you're going to line up the bottom of the flower and then the two sides automatically line up. It's quite easy. These die cuts are they're really well thought out and well engineered because they go together so easily. So there's what I mean about it showing this time. Okay. Okay, so again, I have all my pieces ready to go. Uh, Cosmic Sky is the card front, and I use Teal Topaz Waterfall for the flower buds, Rainforest and Peridot for the leaves and the stems. And right now I'm showing you a few different variations of how you can add these to your cards. There's all four. I do have one spare because I'm going to put it on the inside of this card. Okay, and I thought about doing three, but I really, really like the light and the dark contrast of the four, so I'm going to do that. And there's a couple, there's a few that overlay, so you gotta be careful about how you glue these down. And I left the others in place because it helps you with the gluing down placement of getting these all on the card. It's kind of a tight fit, but you can do it. Okay, so that one's down. Uh, this one that I'm pointing at is laid over the really tall skinny one. So we need to take that apart so that we can glue the tall skinny one down first. Okay. And of course you've got to try and grab it without getting the glue all over your fingers. And I'm trying to work really fast on this because again, I'm working on an embossed base so it's not going to stick on all the right places. And I want to put a couple of acrylic handles on top of this to get it to really glue down flat so that it looks nice and professional. Okay, we've got this one last little guy in the corner here. I'm going to pop some glue on him and then glue him down. And for the sentiments for this one, I have them all done, but I want to glue this first part down. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside and move on a little bit and let them dry. Our final card is the Pictoberries, and as you can see, I did a bunch more work ahead of time. Um, I did make a boo-boo when I grabbed my piece of blue spruce. I thought it was four and a quarter by five and a half, that it was a card front. I got everything all glued down on it and realized it was a four by five and a quarter. So I added a piece of gold mirror cardstock to the card base, and I'm using that repeatedly on the end of each of the buds so that it kind of pulls it all together for a really fabulous card. So starting with the colors, this time we're using Wilted Violet and Pine Needles. We are using uh, Rainforest for the green die cut leaves 
and as you can see adding the pine needles really adds pretty depth to kind of the center part of that I don't have my cleaning cloth with me so you just saw me use my sleeve to take that green off of my glass mat so that I can do the purple I didn't want to stop the video and go find it. So right now I'm gluing some of the berries together. They're very easy to cut out. They're very easy to layer. And I actually found that layering these guys first and then adding the color to the bottom of them was easier than uh, doing it separately. So glue them all together and get all your pieces in just like I'm showing you. And then there's the little uh, end of the berries that I did in the gold. Okay, and then you're going to turn them around just like I just did. And you're going to pull the ink from the bottom up higher on the sides and lower in the center uh, and that will help add the dimension to each of the berries and make them look more rounded and it also adds some beautiful depth at the bottom and when you put this whole card together it's got beautiful depth in it I think this is my favorite probably because I really like this purple and green combination and the blue spruce is by far my favorite color of the Spellbinders cardstock. Okay so yay I finally moved the card up. Okay adding some glue to the back of this little guy and this is a flat surface I didn't uh, use the embossing folder on this one. You're gonna squeeze that little guy in. Okay glue them down and then add some glue where you're going to be putting the two berries and pop your berries on and then again you want to put an acrylic handle over top of this and let it dry i've already done that to the major portion of the card and i've already glued my layers of my sentiment together so i'm going to add the sentiment and then i'm going to add the acrylic handle over top and let this dry Okay, so there's just enough room to sneak it in there. You want to try and get it straight. I keep knocking them sideways. Good, okay, I think I'm happy with that one. Isn't that pretty? I love that color combination. Okay, back to card number three, which is nicely glued down now. We are going to audition where we're going to be putting the sentiment. Again, three pieces, so you want to have it nicely laid out. I'm kind of happy with all that, but I decide to take it all off and I want to glue this flower onto the inside. I'm so excited to have a pretty flower on the inside of this card. I did do the same thing to card number four too, but I forgot to show it to you. Okay, so popping that in there, don't get the glue too close to the edges, otherwise you will glue that card shut. And then we're going to add our sentiment back in again. And what I do is I'm going to do the top one and then I'm going to do the last one. And then that gives me the space to put the A where I want it, that it will look really nice. Okay, and again, use lots of glue because we're on an uneven surface. Okay, gluing the wish down. And then that gives me the room to add the A. And I don't know where the top of my eye went, and I'm not going to worry about it. You get the idea, right? I had so many die cuts going to do this video. It was insane. There we go. Love it. Okay, adding the handle. So here we are all done and I want to show you each of the finished cards up close and personal. Um, everything that I used on today's cards is listed underneath this video. There's also a link over to my blog where you can get a more detailed description and click on the links to all the products that are provided in the Spellbinders website. And I appreciate using my links very much. Thank you. Uh, they are affiliate links and know that I get paid a small commission for you using them at no additional cost to you. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider giving me a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends. It really does help my videos get out there and I appreciate you doing that for me.